There are some people with great ideas, great ideas of how they're going to start a business. Brilliant money-making ideas, but they never get round to them. They fail to realize one thing about this life. Life just passes by way too fast. Before you know it, you're 100 years old and uh, you never actually implemented your idea. <laughs> Folks, life is just way too short for you to postpone implementing that money-making idea, that great money-making idea you have. I'll tell you a sad story to illustrate this point. In the first job I ever worked, the first office I ever worked in, I had this friend called Dismas. That wasn't his real name, yeah, but some of you may know him, yeah, because he, was, he ended up being quite well known. So I'm going to hide his true identity, and I'll just call him Dismas. Dismas was about five years older than I. He had come straight out of school, high school, and uh, Dismas had just graduated from university. Now, Dismas had this great money-making idea, and he had a big dream to one day launch his very own company. He even had the name of the company ready. Now, you had to see Dismas when he started discussing about this idea of his. His eyes would light up with excitement. His enthusiasm was infectious. Yeah, you just had to start getting excited with him. The minute he started talking about this great money-making idea he had. Now in those early years, I didn't have much experience. But I'd already started reading up about businesses. And especially how to start business with very limited financial uh, backing. The minute I received my salary, I would rush to this bookshop in the center of town that uh, sold imported magazines about small businesses. And I would buy quite a number of these magazines, and by the way, they were not cheap. And then I'd go home and spend hours pouring over them on the real-life experiences of uh, startup entrepreneurs. It was in one of these magazines that I first read about two young boys whom the world had not yet uh, heard about, but whom the world were later to know very well. These two kids were working on something which was very new to the world then, something called a personal computer, and they were working from the garage of one of their parents. The names of those two kids was Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. And the company they founded is today one of the most valuable brands in the world. Apple computer. Anyway, my point is, these two kids started their great company with no capital, working on a business idea that at the time looked very, very far-fetched. But what really fascinated me was the way it was started without any financing, yeah, without any capital. And I gave my friend Dismas the idea. Yeah, I gave him various examples, real-life examples, from what I read in these magazines. Now, Dismas was a very traditional, conservative kind of guy. Yeah, so he dismissed my ideas immediately. He told me that he knew one bank manager. The bank manager was his relative. And what Dismas was doing was working on something called a cash flow projection. And he knew that within no time, he'd be able to get a good bank loan and launch his dream idea, his dream business. We worked together in that office for about two years. Dismas never got round to launching his business. We both left and went our, went our different directions, but would meet in the streets. And I would always ask Dismas about how his idea was going. And Dismas was very enthusiastic every time I asked him. Yeah, He would say something like, there's a small hiccup, there's a small problem I'm sorting out. Next time we meet, I'm sure I'll have a business card to give you. And the years passed, and then Dismas fell in love. He fell in love with this woman who was uh, much older than he was. But I think it was genuine because, again, he was very enthusiastic about it. His eyes lit up when he told me about it. And she was already established in some career. And uh, what would happen is that Dismas would uh, drive around town in her car. He was very excited. And he gave me a ride in his uh, fiancé's car several times 
And then somebody told me, a mutual friend, that Dismas had landed a very high profile job. And the years passed. And one day there was major breaking news about an aircraft accident. Yeah, everybody was paying attention to it. And in this aircraft accident, fortunately there were survivors. The aircraft had uh, unfortunately crashed shortly after takeoff into the ocean. Then to my sheer horror, I discovered that Dismas was on that plane. And I immediately knew that he was not one of the survivors. Not only did uh, Dismas not know how to swim, he had uh, a phobia for water. He was terrified yeah, about water. He was terrified about the very idea of coming anywhere near a large mass of water. And pictures started appearing uh, in the media of the aircraft wreckage floating on the water. And all I could see was uh, Dismas very excited uh, face and uh, the wreckage of his business idea floating in the ocean, on the ocean. Dismas was a great guy and it took me quite a long time to get over that one. But let me tell you another story, a much happier story, and again, a true story. And this one is about my friend called George. I started hearing about George's exploits when he was still in college. The guy was a wizard with computers, and George was very ambitious. And one day, George stumbled on a very brilliant business idea. One day, somebody brought a computer to him that had crashed, okay? And uh, this person said they had information and data on that computer they could not afford to lose. They just had to recover it. Now, this person was very desperate because he had been around. He had seen quite a few people who knew a thing or two about computers. But none of them had been able to recover the data for him. And George's reputation had spread, and so he had been given George's name. So here he was, in George's room, uh, at college, yeah, where George had still not finished his studies. And George did his magic and he recovered the data for this guy. Now, George had something which I can call a killer instinct, yeah. When he saw an opportunity, when he saw a kill, yeah, he would not hesitate. He went for the full kill, he went for the jugular. Now, when this guy had come in the first time, George noticed how desperate the guy was. He was very desperate to recover that data. And as George told me later, it took him about 10 minutes yeah, to figure out a way of recovering that data. And he knew that it would not take him more than 20 minutes to recover the entire data. So he turned to this guy and told him, yes, I can recover this data. And the man was very excited. And George told him that uh, this thing is going to take a lot of work. I'll have to work uh, on it overnight. And it's going to cost you 300,000 Kenya shillings. Yeah, that's $3,000. And the man was very desperate. He said, no problem, no problem. Just work on it as long as you recover the data. I, all I want is the data. It's very valuable to me. And so George told him, come back tomorrow morning with the money. Yeah, and you'll get your data. And after his customer had uh, gone... Uh, it took George uh, about 30 minutes to completely recover all the data and also to back it up, just in case. And he spent the rest of the evening watching movies and he slept. And the next morning, George rubbed his eyes vigorously so that they looked bloodshot, yeah, like he had not slept the whole night. And when the customer came in, he presented him with his recovered data. His customer, of course, was very delighted and happily paid him 300,000 shillings in cash. And George realized there was an opportunity here, and he used that 300,000 shillings as his seed money or capital to launch his data recovery business. Now, if you asked me, personally, I wouldn't do business like this. Yeah. But this is a classic example of how somebody launches a business without uh, getting any financing. He followed the precise steps, yeah, that I've detailed in a previous video. Yeah, you have a business idea, you test the idea by actually doing it, even before you launch your business. And from the money you raise, you're able to launch your business very comfortably. You do a few deals, yeah, make money here, make money there, three, four deals, and you have your cash to launch your business. 
Remember that video? Don't launch your business. Don't start your business. Make some money first. Now in another video, I will give you other classic examples of how people start businesses without capital. How instead of wasting time talking about an idea and the years are going, yeah, you actually roll up your sleeves and you get to work. I will give you plenty of real life examples. But there's a problem here. Not everybody has brilliant ideas yeah, that you can actually get to work with and raise the money to actually launch your business proper. However, if you are a regular on this channel, you know that that is not a problem. Yeah, because there's a place where you can get all these brilliant ideas. Yeah, the ebooks we've been promoting on this channel. You can see them on your screens now. Not only that, there's another ebook. Yeah, we're selling a package where you'll get very brilliant ideas of how to sell, how to market, how to promote those ideas so that you hit the ground running. Yeah, with a steady stream of customers. Sometimes, with more customers than you can than you can actually handle, these two ebooks can be in your inbox in seconds. Yeah, all you need to do is use that email address you see on your screens right now, and you'll get an automated response with full payment instructions. The package costs only twenty five dollars or Kenya shillings two thousand five hundred. Folks, life is too short for you to keep on postponing your success. Indeed, one of the most important things you'll ever do is to roll up your sleeves and get working on that business idea. Start. Take action today. Don't postpone because you never know. The story I've told you about Dismas is sad, but many people go through this life like that. Just talking, just dreaming, but never actually getting to do something. Life is too short for you to keep on postponing your dream. Take action now. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.